Welcome to the Divine Living Talk Show. I'm your host, Gina DeVee, and this is your weekly lifestyle segment where creating a beautiful life becomes the priority and you become even more fabulous. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. the most difficult question for me to answer where do you live so today we are talking about the Lux nomad lifestyle this is something I have been doing for many many years now and has served me and my husband well but I get so many questions about well what do you do with your dog and how, what happens with your mail and I don't know what where are your things <laughs> and so today we're diving in deep and I'm happy to share with you my philosophy about why I choose to live this way and any of the logistics that are important to those of you who are homebodies, who you want to know where your stuff is. Um, so I think that it just really came about because I love to travel and being blessed to be living at this time on the planet when I literally can work from anywhere you know, it was a kind of a match made in heaven. Like part of me is like, why would I stay in one place? If it doesn't matter if I'm in LA or New York or Paris or the South of France or Bali, I can still get my work done. I can still do my calls and I can travel the world and experience different cultures and different foods and you know, all the joys of travel plus meet people around the world. It's really the way I love to roll. So I guess this started when I really freed myself from the concept of needing to buy a house. Uh, living in Southern California will free you of that pretty quickly when you start to do the cha-ching about how much money you actually need to buy a house. And you're like, yeah, I, that's not happening anytime soon. So uh, renting really became a way of life. And as I was building up my career, you know, I kept telling myself, well, I would never pay more than this amount in rent. That would just be foolish and be throwing money away. And then my career would grow and I could afford a little bit more in rent, not enough to buy a house. Like the house that I would have bought would have not really been what I would have enjoyed for my lifestyle. But if I upped the rent a little bit, it would have. So Southern California has a great renting scene and I kept doing that. And finally, it got to a place where I just realized, you know what? Now I want to go travel. So my career had taken off and I wanted to go spend about six weeks in Italy. And I planned this beautiful trip from the top of Italy. Uh, Alba it was during white truffle season where white truffles really come from. All the way down, Glenn and I did a road trip to the south of Italy, literally drove to Sicily, the, the island off the, the toe of the boot. And we, anyways, so I knew I was going to be gone for six weeks. And I just said, you know what, Glenn? I think that when I get back from this trip, I'm going to be a new woman. And this home isn't going to be my home anymore. And he's such a supportive man. Uh, he's like, okay. And so we basically, we gave notice for our lease and put all of our stuff in storage, went on this amazing Italian road trip and came back and sure enough, I was a changed woman. I was in a new vibration. I just, I had new ideas swirling. I had new business goals and I just started looking around and nothing seemed to open up for me in LA. So I got out of the box a little bit and I just like, wonder what Montecito or Santa Barbara's like. And I went and I looked and it was like, boom, there was like a kitchen that I fell in love with in this fantastic area. And I was like, let's move to Montecito, which is about an hour and a half, two hours north of LA. So we did that. So not only did I not have to pay rent during the six weeks that I was gone in Italy, it's kind of paid for that trip. Then I got back and had all my stuff in storage moved to that location. And then I worked on my business and later that summer I was like I want to go back to Europe and I wanted to go for a long time I think we went I remember correctly like they're kind of blurring together now but it was like three months so again I went and put my stuff in storage and you know people think that I was being an idiot financially because I you know was renting for me it worked out great because I wasn't paying double rent and I was able to travel and I had the freedom it, you know it really suited my own values 
so then we just started doing this for, uh, and then like the next year we went on the road for six months at a time so it just kind of worked for us put our stuff in storage we got good at it um and you know you hire people to handle these things and then you go and travel and um, you know, we either stay at hotels or we went rent villas, then Airbnb came out and we do a lot of Airbnb. So it's just been a really enjoyable way to see the world, not pay double rent. And the logistics are all pretty easy. So let's go through the regulars. Um, there's something called mail services. There's places and people who will collect your mail for you while you're gone. And by the way, most of that's done on email anyway. So it's not like the olden days where you had to get your mail. Um, what was actually more important is that we had this uh, mail service so that when we were in Europe and we bought things that we would have an address that our packages would arrive and someone would receive them for us. So that's the, the mail package situation. Storage is storage and I'll leave the links of all my great resources. We've now stumbled upon this amazing storage place that like has all of our boxes itemized so if I come to LA or go to New York and I'm like I want the crystal wine glasses they can just like ship that and it's not crazy expensive it's super affordable and it's really organized anyway so storage is storage you can figure that part out probably the hardest part about travel is leaving our dogs behind we're not small dog people we've always had labs they're not uh they're, they're too big to travel with let's just put it that way so we've found a variety of camps canine camps shall we say where i can pretty much promise you they don't miss me as much as i miss them they're like swimming every day and hiking and like with dog lovers and with like lots of dogs i think they kind of get irritated when glenn and i show back up and we're like time to come home and watch us sit behind our computer 10 hours a day uh but anyways the dogs are fine uh lily's great she's at camp as we speak so my heart's a little broken, but you know, I'm not going to not live my life and travel the world and meet clients around the world and do what I love to do um, because I have an animal that I love here in California. So I know that she's more than taken care of. So this was our lifestyle for a number of years. And then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy a house. And I think that, like all of that conditioning was just embedded in me. Like that's the responsible thing to do. That's the grown up thing to do. That's like a, I don't know, I want a house that I own. And if I wanna knock out a wall or paint it or hang pictures that I can. So Glenn and I, we found this beautiful ocean view home in Santa Barbara and I did love it. I, it was a beautiful home. I, I guess I had the joy of home ownership um, for me personally, it was definitely overrated, but I will tell you this, it was hysterical to me when I announced that I had bought a home, the emails that flooded in probably from many of you and definitely from my best friends like, oh, thank God, you're finally acting responsibly with your money. We were so concerned about you. I'm like, what? I've been having a blast, people. Have you not been watching me on social? Like, my life's good. But apparently this, like, must buy home, must buy home is so ingrained, ingrained in people from around the world. Well, I bought the home. I had the home. And between how much you have to put down as an entrepreneur for a down payment, how much it costs to furnish the joint, then there's landscaping, then there's property tax, and oh, by it, like during a drought, it decided to rain in Santa Barbara, and so then you gotta go get sandbags and deal with stuff. It was like, oh, and it didn't stop my desire to spend months on end in Europe, so now I'm paying my mortgage and my villa in the south of France. That's what didn't make financial sense to me. So. Put that home up for sale. Thank you very much. I experienced the joys of home ownership. And I do like a footloose and fancy free situation currently. I'm not saying that I would never buy a home again. The circumstances would have to be right. Um, I just, at this point, have given myself the freedom. I don't know where I'd even buy one right now because there isn't one place that kind of has it all for me. I like my summers in the south of France. I like spring and fall in New York. I like winters in LA. And the renting scene just gives me the freedom and the flexibility and then like who knows if i'm like going to get excited about dubai again and you know then there's bali it's like it's a big world to see and i can do my work from anywhere so um 
Are there some downsides to it? Yes, but not worth me being confined to a physical mail-in address. Um, you know, at times, yes, you're just like, oh, where's, where's that crystal that I'd like to use? Or like all of our dinner plates, if we're not in the place that those are, you know, sometimes it would be nice if, if all of my stuff traveled around with me. But the variety and the experience is really my value system, and that's what's more important to me. I collect stuff along the way. I'm materialistic. I'm a Capricorn. I'm totally good with things. Um, it's kind of funny that as I travel, if I buy anything other than clothes, it's like things for the home I don't have. Poor Glenn. He's like, what? Dishes for a house you don't even own? And I was like, but these napkins are lovely, and the napkin rings. It's... So at some point I might grow up and actually have a house somewhere and then I'll be so thrilled that I've collected these things. Um, but it's just fun for me right now and it's just a choice. So the reason why I am sharing my Lux Nomadic lifestyle is because I think that it's important for women like us to really get that there's a choice how you live and where you live and it's a big world out there. You know, so getting too stuck in our ruts and and thinking that we can't do something until we save the money or pay off this or that you know those are old school rules you know my god leads me and i just decided to stop letting some old white men tell me how i should spend my money or save my money or invest my money or even make my money because those rules kept me having a master's degree in psychology and living off of about two thousand dollars a month and I was broke and I was struggling and I wasn't very happy so today I'm not saying that I am any financial planners dream uh, but I am living my dream and I'm not waiting for one day to allow myself to experience what I need to experience um, so I love the way that I live. Have I made mistakes along the way? Sure. And I've learned from those. So even in those mistakes, I have moved forward faster, uh, like all of us do. But the Lux Nomadic lifestyle pretty much allows me to chase the sun, which is important to me. Um, if you ever see me in snow or skiing for longer than three days, please be concerned. Someone come find me. It's, it's, it's not how I do life. I'll be wearing a caftan somewhere. And, um, you know, that's, it's one of the luxuries of being an entrepreneur. There's so many responsibilities that come with it. So I've just really chosen to allow myself to get up in whatever time zone that I'm in, answer my emails, do my thing, live my schedule, and uh, experience the world, because that's what lights me up. So I would love to hear what lights you up. I know that there are so many, yeah, but you can do this because you don't have kids or you have a successful career. No excuses policy, my love. Let's leave a comment below. I wanna get into the conversation. What is going to free you and what's the most freeing lifestyle for you? You might love being a homebody and not traveling. Other of you are like, I wanna travel more. I wanna hear about it, so leave a comment below. And by all means, anybody who thinks that the only way to live is to save all your money to buy a house, please go and forward this and share this with them. There's a big world out there that's waiting for them and I know this episode will help them.